Welcome to Care Talk, America's home for incisive debate about healthcare business and policy. Or maybe I should say Amazon's home, but we'll come to that in a minute. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll, the CEO of Care Centers. I mean, David, Amazon does seem to live everywhere. Yeah, and we're primed to discuss it, John. I, I would say that uh, they've made a lot of moves in healthcare. We've been talking about it since we actually started the show. We should be given a little royalty to Mr. Bezos because he gives us so much fodder. But in all, in all seriousness, John, or at least in half seriousness, Amazon's been doing some big stuff in healthcare lately, and I think it's time to bring everyone up to date on it. Amazon is like the the beast that ate retail, right? I mean, they're they're everywhere. They've revolutionized home delivery. They have uh, they're they've chipped over, they're chipping away at grocery, some of the biggest categories of America. But it's a monster growth engine that needs monsters to grow. And and healthcare at twenty percent of GDP is clearly a big target. And they're, the other thing that's amazing about Amazon is anytime they go into a market, everybody's stock kind of flops. They're sort of the heavyweight wrestler in, in, in retail. Uh, they've won in terms of cloud-based web services, which I know that you're going to explain the technical details there. But to be fair, David, they have yet to succeed pretty much anywhere in healthcare even though there's there are these waves of paranoia and fear. David, should people in healthcare be afraid? Well, John, I mean, I even had this question, you know, after we were talking about, yeah, they do this and that. And someone said to me, even like, does Amazon do healthcare? You know, or is it just they just happen to be there and scare, scares everybody? What do you think of that question? I mean, the answer is clearly they're, they're playing in some way. All right. So first of all, they, they purchased PillPack. Uh, back in 2018, there's a big splash there. That's one of the times when, you know, all the stocks of the PBMs uh, fell, uh, pharmacy benefit managers, because they thought there was going to be something. That hasn't been much. They clearly have the business actually um, selling supplies to doctor's offices. It's actually a decent sized business because those are small businesses and Amazon dominates that market. They had Amazon Care, uh, which is providing telehealth and primary care. That is going to be shut down. We're going to talk about that. And then there's been Haven, which they did with JP Morgan and with uh, Berkshire Hathaway. It's kind of a road of failures. Like, is that what you're saying, David? No. So they so they did Amazon Cares, John. And now, now they made a $4 billion purchase of One Medical. And that is a membership-based, technology-integrated, consumer-focused primary care platform, John. They're going to have almost a million members to start with and 8,000 companies. So they're going to shut down Amazon Cares because it's mostly redundant. It's too narrow. It uh, doesn't mean it was a failure, John. It means they learn and they iterated, they moved ahead. You know, I don't know. Like we're iterating, at least like you're moving toward the goal. So are you, are you saying that one overpaying for a bunch of doctors for you know, a couple of hundred doctor practices is a win? I say it shows that they uh, have learned and that they're going to, and they've learned partly they're going to buy something and run that as opposed to just, just starting it up. I think it's real, John. I think it's a re- the real deal. I think it could. It's not necessarily going to revolutionize healthcare in the U.S., but it's a, it's significant. And primary care is where the action is. What kind of action is that? So let's go the gateway. You know, it's the gateway to the system. And so you're just talking like phrase like gateway. You. It sounds like a consultant's deck about what Amazon should do next. Like it's a. Uh, you know, I, I think the bottom line is they've really had a hard time breaking into healthcare. But what I find fascinating is they're relentless. I mean, PillPack has taken years to really integrate into, they've got hundreds of engineers working on it, to integrate it into the base site. Um, They've quietly become a real force, to your point, in retail distribution to doctor's offices and um, sort of transportable mail, things you can mail in terms of durable medical equipment. I think they are, you where they where they've actually had a lot of success, Amazon Web Services, the dominant cloud um, software platform in the world, um, is where they build, where they grow into healthcare from where they've already got an edge, whether it's their 1800 distribution facilities, um, the, the fact that nearly everybody who's a, who's a relative middle to high income purchaser is in Amazon Prime. Uh, where they uh, in, in distribution of stuff to doctors' offices and people's homes, like where they've actually got a strong base, they grow well. I think the message from what we've seen thus far, um, No Haven, Amazon Cares, I mean, a whole series of of starts and stops, 
um, is that A, they're relentless and B, they're less successful where they don't start with a very strong base. And that may have, have as much to do with the culture of a large company as it has to do with the actual strategy. But I, but while I'm, while I'm poking at you for suggesting that they're going to win everywhere, which they're not, I think it's worth thinking about what that, that track record shows both about corporate personality, they're not going away, and their willingness to take risks, which they seem to be willing to do, and where, but, but where their edge is not surprisingly where they're already strong. Well, John, let's look at the, sort of the, the big picture. Uh, Amazon is great at delivering all sorts of products to people and, and helping them with, uh, you know, with Prime. It's so convenient. Uh, you can get this wide array of stuff and they know what you want and what you need. And so that's what they're really good at. If you look at healthcare, a reason that people in healthcare quake in their boots when Amazon does something is they know how bad the healthcare system is to start. Now, mentioning boots for a minute, someone told me the other day about how, you know, once they think, oh, I might need some new boots, then it's all over the place, suggesting all these boots, they knew the boots they had before. It's all over for e-commerce and contrasting uh, with a primary care physician might have a patient on board for a year before they know the patient has cancer and is being treated by an oncologist. And so just the amount, the the disconnect between how good the retail and e-commerce side of things are and how bad the healthcare system is in sharing data, I think is a basis why people are always scared of Amazon because you, you just do a little bit of what they and others do on the commerce side, you could really revolutionize healthcare. Well, think about how terrible the average, if you look at healthcare as a retail product, I mean, what retail product um, uh, waits for you to, 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 to try to connect with the product and service, and then you make them wait, you bury them with paperwork, and you make it hard to navigate. I mean, that's honestly what most people with chronic conditions, I mean, the, mo- the money in healthcare is around folks who are older or who have chronic conditions. And in healthcare is the only uh, a, a retail-like service in America, where the more you need, the, the harder it is to get what you need. And I think that that's where, to your point, Amazon really has an edge in terms of just its approach to surprising and delighting the patient or the customer uh, and their family. Uh, but there's a but I but I but I do think that they do not have an infinite up and to the right growth opportunity here. But there is a lot that conventional healthcare could learn from Amazon, just in terms of thinking about the patient um, as, 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 the, as the primary customer, as opposed to what typically happens in healthcare, which is how you get paid and whether you get paid, it kind of drives all of the activity in the healthcare system at a patient level, which is crazy when you think about it. So John, if you look at Amazon, they're both a tech company and also a retailer. And so, how do you think about them, not just relative to the traditional healthcare uh, providers, but compared to a CVS, Walmart, and Walgreens on the one side, on the retail side, and then compared to like a Google and Microsoft on the on the tech side, as it relates to healthcare? Well, I think that the from a tech perspective, they've got an edge in Amazon Web Services, which if they were to focus on some of the mundane challenges in healthcare, just taking out costs in transactions, helping um, or, uh, organizations like hospitals and small doctors' offices actually manage their offices, they could be quite compelling and effective. I just don't know that that's, a, honestly, a big enough opportunity financially for them to really focus on. Uh, but it's the same problem that Microsoft and Google and others have faced, which is that the they're, in some ways, the, the cleaning, up, cleaning up the bureaucracy and simplifying the paperwork is really where we need to go, where, where technology could add the greatest edge. But it's the least interesting from a clinical perspective or from a strategist. You get folks involved in these problems and they want to cure cancer, or which is obviously super important, or you know, re, remake physician workflow. And really what we need to do is make cost and, um, and paper and, and, and sort of clutter go away to, to, to make sure that patients get the care they need. But that's, that's sort of a, a ambition, not matching ability problem for healthcare technology in general. You see it, Google has stumbled repeatedly in that area, and yet they have a real edge in terms of more information. I mean, in terms of information, 
and, 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 and taking the clutter out of healthcare, no one's got a better edge than Google. And they've really, they've not focused on it. And in fact, they're behind. I think on the retail side, it, it, there's going to be great movement on the part of all the retailers, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, Amazon, to get into healthcare just because it's so large and there's such a big opportunity. I mean, the, 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 the challenge is to sort of, is, is to sort of maintain your retail edge of understanding how to really de delight and engage patients with a brand and a customer experience that matters, a customer experience that in many ways is more consistent with whether it's uh, the, the, the 200 million people a year who walk into a Walmart or the six or eight times a year, the, the, the average patient, chronic patient will go to their local pharmacy or the, 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 the number of times someone will order something from Amazon Retail has got an edge because it's actually closer to customers and has a better relationship. But whether you can match that with solving healthcare problems that people really need solving, as opposed to just you know sending them all the ancillary stuff that's the easy stuff. I mean, there's a in a in a funny way a um, a corporate capability and market fit mismatch on both of these. The 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 problems that tech can solve aren't as text has historically not been not that interested in solving. And the, the, the place where retail has an edge isn't necessarily where kind of a lot of folks in healthcare have focused. So it's in both cases, but I think there's still a lot of, I mean, we, I, I was fetching about all the ways in which Amazon has sort of, has sort of started and stopped, but it's going to keep starting and stopping until it finds ways to blow, break through. And I think Walmart's very similar, you know, Walgreens and CVS are very similar. Um, they're coming for healthcare, uh, and I th and I think they will find ways to. I just look at Walgreens' investment in care centrics and their desire to get closer to that patient in a post acute setting. And the average patient leaves the hospital with five or six different um, uh, discharge orders, whether it's to get a script or get some durable medical equipment or get some home healthcare. If that can be coordinated in a more effective way and leverage the Walgreens, the WalMarts, and the CVSs of the world, you could create a much more consistent patient experience that would a lot be, make it easier for caretakers and, and caregivers to as well as patients to navigate healthcare. You know, you think of what what happens to a, a typical kid who's a family with a kid who's chronically ill. They're navigating way too many providers. Um, and I think that I think that's where retail has an edge and, and healthcare is, is is sort of still a little bit of sleep at the wheel. Well, if you look at these hospital-dominated uh, integrated delivery networks, you know they'll have the patient when they're in the hospital, which is really uh, doesn't happen that often, and, and it's really represents a failure. And most times, somebody's in the hospital, and then they want to keep them through the whole continuum of care. So they focus on okay, more outpatient services and so on. But it's really not a very patient-centric kind of a focus. The retailers start from a very customer-centric focus, and the question is sort of like as a patient though. Like, how do you see this thing really, really changing? Like, if you're if you're ill, how much are you really ever going to want to rely on an Amazon or Walgreens? You know, compared to a famous hospital uh, dominated system, you're still going to want to go there because okay, this is well, serious. <clears throat> I got to be out of Amazon, out of CVS, and to doctor such and such. You know, I think I think you you go back to the um, the 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 lessons from innovators dilemma from some of the early stages of other industries that have been disrupted. And what you see is innovation doesn't start at the core. It starts at the edges. And so that's why I think pharmacy is really interesting because patients are already there. There's, there, there's a trust factor and a brand identification and a, you know, ultimately proximity being close to in, in the neighborhoods really does matter. Um, I, and, I th and I think you're going to see, you're going to see um, some really interesting, I think, uh, experiments with digital first interactions, because everybody uh, during COVID found that, that digital inter interactions with their doctors and hospitals were more effective. You're not going to see it in the, the, when you're talking about integrated delivery systems, these large mega hospital systems that have consolidated doctor practices and local hospitals into big brand names, like whether it's Intermountain or Weill Cornell or whatever, wherever you are, there, there tends to be dominant hospital systems. I don't think you're going to see innovation there. It's going to be in, that's one of the reasons why we're very focused on what's going on in post-acute. Uh, it's going to be in, in, in innovative ways to interact faster and smarter by apps. That's why the one medical investment is a really an interesting investment. 
because it's cons- it, it builds on what Amazon is really good at, which is a digital digital first innovation. All right, so John, but as those as those start to play out, David, I think they could be pulled through the system, but they're not going to start in the big hospital systems. You're going to see the innovation outside of that. John, You're going to see it in your mailbox. John, I heard, I heard the siren going by. I thought the thought police are finally coming after you, but uh, we'll, we'll see where they pull up at the door. Final question. Can Amazon fix healthcare? What say you? I, I think Amazon could help. I think all of the retailers could help. I mean, it, it, it the customer experience couldn't get much worse. Retailers are focused on customer experience, a fair price, and staying close to the customer. If the rest of healthcare could actually tune itself into what patients need, which I don't think they're capable of doing, uh, I think that uh, it would be better. And I think the retailers all in, including Amazon with their digital edge, are going to start to school healthcare and improve it. I think Amazon can. What about you? I think Amazon can fix healthcare delivery, but we really need uh, the federal government uh, to fix healthcare payment. That's what I think, John. Well, that's it for yet another edition of Care Talk. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll, the CEO of Care Centrics. If you like what you heard or you didn't, please subscribe on your favorite service.